another uh, man who is not uh, shy of, of, of saying things as they are, uh, straight up front. Earlier uh, in the war, he said Israel should have shut the mouths of, of hostage families. Now he eyes annexation, deportation, Israel to take over Gaza, that is, and Gazans to be sent to Ireland. Uh, former convicted uh, U.S. spy, future Israeli member of parliament, maybe, Mr. Uh, Jonathan Pollard, uh, former U.S. intelligence analyst, um, convicted of espionage, uh, joining us uh, now uh, tonight uh, from Jerusalem. Thank you very much, Mr. Pollard, uh, for your time. A display hour of the day. Um, well, let's begin by, by giving you the, the stage to explain. What do you mean by, by sending Gazans uh, uh, to Ireland, sir? First of all, Hamas was a creation of the Palestinian people in Gaza. It wasn't something that was imposed on them. It was something that was elected by them. So Hamas can't be seen as something distinct from the people it elected. There's no way in the world that we can have security, adequate security in the Strip if those people are still allowed to reside there. It's as simple as that. Hamas will come back, they will reestablish themselves, and we, if we have supposedly security control over the Strip, we'll find ourselves in the same situation that we did in southern Lebanon with the security zone there. It'll be a slow, bleeding war of attrition. And we simply can't, we, we can't fight wars of attrition. We, it just doesn't work for us. So as far as the Gazans themselves are concerned, they, as I said before, they have to get somewhere. And where that is, personally, I don't care. After what I saw on October 7th, uh, the fact that we're not just obliterating Gaza right now is uh, more of a sign of our ethics in our decency than it is really what we should be doing there to them. It's a, it's a society that declared war on us and committed unspeakable atrocities against our people. As, we, as we've said, not seen since the Khurban. So as far as where they can go is concerned, I find it very unusual, and it should be pointed out, that not one Arab country, and nor Iran, nor Turkey, wants them. And it isn't because they're they're afraid of denying the Palestinians a half state in Gaza. It's just they realize that wherever these people go, revolution, terror, is it comes in their wake. It's ask uh, King Abdullah if he remembers what happened in Jordan, if he was old enough at that time to remember what happened in Black September in 1970. I guess he wasn't born yet. But uh, his father ended up murdering, killing, slaughtering at least 20,000 Palestinians that mm -hmm. tried to overthrow his monarchy. So as far as the future, the day after is concerned, there is absolutely no way we can guarantee security for our southern communities if we allow any of the current residents of Gaza to remain. This is why I've been in favor of annexation and repopulation by Jewish uh, citizens, by Israeli citizens in uh, in Gaza. Um, yeah. They, they started the war, okay? They started it. They lost. So I'm sorry, but by the rules of war and history, they lose basically everything. So that's where I'm coming from on that. Mr. Perry, here in the studio, please chime in. I, uh, I share Mr. Pollard's anger at what happened on October 7th, indeed rage, and, and like him, I, I do blame the Palestinian public for, uh, for supporting Hamas to the degree that they do. Uh, however, I fear he is desperately wrong about the rules of war and precedents in history. Many countries in history have started wars. I can't think of too many that were fully depopulated as a consequence. Uh, look, the extreme right around the world uh, uh, typically uh, advocates simplistic solutions to complicated problems, uh, sometimes flirting with immorality, and populations, when they're traumatized, as Israel's is, sometimes can be seduced for a time. But I don't know too many cases in history, and Mr. Pollard mentioned history, uh, where countries that had a flirtation with such fascism and extreme nationalism looked back upon it with pride. And the expulsion of the entire population of Gaza, I fear, is a case in point. I mean, the immorality if is, I, is if clear. I uh, but if right. I could complete right. my point, uh, yeah. uh, it's both immoral 
and impracticable. It would be a case of ethnic cleansing, which is a war crime. Israel would be dragged again to The Hague, where this time there would not be a discussion about it. There would be an immediate conviction. Israel would lose all its allies in, in, in Europe, which is its number one trading partner. In America, its number two trading partner and its protector, without which it wouldn't have spare parts, and it would become quickly a state mounting a desperate offense against an onslaught from the entire world, but this time in the status of being totally ostracized ostracized uh, and having forsworn what's left of its national of its international standing so we Mr. don't Pollard, have any international standing well, we still do we don't have any and it's because of people like you that have spent your career undermining our rights to survival as Jews sure? in our own God-given land how, how, how have we I face done that? this situation right now. I mean, that's rather... As far as history is concerned, I'm sorry. Mr. Paul, that's, that's a big accusation. State. Why are you accusing me of undermining Israel's ability to exist? It, it, if, read, by the way, I have if read I... your material. I have read your material uh, for quite a while. And it's uh, quite clear. Oh, that all our right, gentlemen, let's are... try to, to refrain from. Look, just, and just to be clear, uh, what, what I have I, advocated just in this, uh, just well, one sentence, please. I have advocated the partition of the country into an Israeli Palestinian state, which Israel needs to salvage itself demographically. Right. Now, the right wing in Israel that's, that's a appears lie. to. Now, no, hold on, because this is a very important this point that leads. Is a total fallacy. Uh, Israel has a Jewish a minority. Fallacy, Israel, plus the territories, has a Jewish minority right now. By the way, no, I respect you because the right wing in Israel appears to be too clueless to understand that without a partition, excuse not, me, it was your no, I, let, without a partition, with Zionist democratic Israel will die. However, the far the right, right, the far right, by advocating expulsion, then, may be immoral, but at least it can do math. Right. Mr. Pollard, please. Okay, could I just ask? Of could course. I just add one thing here? As far as history is concerned, I guess, Mr. Perry, you weren't in uh, class when you studied what happened at the end of World War One, or at the end of World War Two, or in Korea or in Vietnam before uh, at the end of the uh, war uh, with the French decolonization. There are lots of case studies where depopulation occurred in the in the, Total in the depopulation. South Korea, for example, Germany was humbled and but not expelled way, way, to whoever would have them. In, in the wake of the Second World War, which you obviously don't remember or don't know of, most of My the parents Germans are Holocaust survivors. From yeah. Eastern Europe, yeah. Sudetenland, Russia, uh, Romania, all those countries, from Poland as well. So, well, let's try to fast forward. To the let's, War as well, gentlemen, let's Turkey try to, to fast forward to, to, to this point in time. Mr. Pollard, you mentioned uh, Israel's lack of global standing, as you've put it. What's your take on the American uh, stance on the, on the war? Should they have been more supportive? Should Israel uh, uh, listen more, listen less? Do you think Biden no, really I, have the, Israel's it. best interest uh, uh, at heart here? No, they don't. The United States is becoming a belligerent right now and not a supporter or even an ally or less a supporter of Israel. And let me explain why. We all know about the multi-front war and what that means in terms of geographic areas of conflict. The Americans have opened up yet another front against us. Uh, Secretary of State Blinken just overturned uh, Secretary of State Pompeo's ruling that living in, in the territories, their Jewish habitation in the territories was legal under international law. He just threw it over, just woke up and threw it over. He's, he's demanding that we assure the United States that we're going to follow the rules of war. We have the most ethical army in the world. And he's, he's conditioning, they are conditioning the supply of equipment under an, a treat, uh, an agreement that was reached with the Obama administration. Okay, I could go on and on and on listing mm -hmm. all the things that the Obama, that the, sorry, the Obama administration, as I call it, I, has done to Israel since yeah. the beginning of the war. Yeah. And I'm sorry, if you're in favor of a, of a two-state solution, if you're in favor right. of a slow suicidal death for Israel, then yes, I guess the United States is an ally of Israel. Uh, Mr. But Pollard, if, you're not, if, yeah. you, if yes. you don't favor partition and also don't favor expulsion, but you apparently do, uh, then what you're looking at is a binational state that is not the Zionist dream and will not be Israel. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. 
Uh, that's that's um, a simple th- th- Those are the numbers. 15 like million people in the Holy Land, half of them are Jews and half are not. Now, look, no. as for the U.S., you mentioned Biden. Uh, I, I don't want to see the U.S. unilaterally recognize a Palestinian state. Of course, that is a bad way to go about your business. Uh, it's a complicated situation, but your position ignores, I fear, the fact that Biden has stood by Israel while most of the world has not, while Israel has, in an action that but I do believe is justified, led to the deaths of tens of thousands of people in Gaza. He, at this point, stands to lose the election because of his support for Israel. He has declared himself a Zionist. He declares himself a Zionist at a time in history where, because of the Jewish extreme right, because of the Israeli extreme right, having dragged the reputation of Zionism through the mud, for someone to say they're a Zionist, much less when they're the U.S. president, is an act of bravery. I think there is more than a whiff of ingratitude. Biden Biden doesn't even know what planet he's on. Somebody uh, hands him the notes, pulls the you know, string, I, and talks. Uh, I think it's not, the last uh, guy to talk to. Him. I think it would be unwise for either one of us to engage in ageism at this point in history. Yeah, no, no, I, but maybe all of us are losing, losing uh, this. Uh, Look, I, 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 I want to say it's a complex situation. The U.S. has stood by Israel, uh, and a little bit of gratitude might perhaps not be the un-Jewish thing. For what they've just done to us threatening us to, to close bank accounts of Israeli citizens that haven't committed any crimes, acting like the British mandate again. All We're talking about again, a handful of settlers who are accused of terrorizing the Palestinians. No, I'm sorry. That's not what a friend does. That's not what but an you're misrepresenting does. what Biden did. No, no, what, what the Biden is what Mr. Pollard is pointing out is the timing of, of such a move, uh, even if, 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 if its mere essence can be debated. The timing, uh, I'll perhaps... Put it, I'll make it real simple, guys. Without Biden's Supports the Israel would would no longer be able to carry out the war. And, and once again, That's I will try true. to to drag us to to this about point the in time. Military establishment, except what the people that created October seventh have fed you. Those people shouldn't even be in charge of the war right the now. Pe- they should be in jail, facing dereliction of duty. Who, who, are, you, who are those people? Who, are, who who created October seventh, and is supposedly what? feeding me? I don't understand. I've lost a train what? of your thoughts. That's all you parrot. Are the, are the same people, the same security experts, oh, the security so, experts, quote unquote, who led us into October 7th? These people shouldn't be anywhere near the the. Uh, the I, I have of, to find myself in, right in, in, in extraordinary all. agreement with you. The military uh, leaders on October 7th absolutely are responsible and should resign forthwith. And the same applies for the unwise political leadership that bears culpability no less, but runs away from it Agreed. in a display that is rather Agreed. pitiful. All right. Hallelujah, gentlemen. We Hallelujah. find common ground. Um, and we still have a few minutes to talk, so maybe we can find more agreements. Um, um, so uh, I, I, once again, we'll drag the conversation to, to this point in time. Gentlemen, um, hostage deal on the table. Hostage deal, ceasefire uh, um, uh, deal. Um, Mr. Pollard, y- y- you spoke against the previous one, the previous deal. What's your um, take on, on the current pending one? I'm totally opposed to the aid going in to Hamas. I am totally opposed to a ceasefire of any duration. And I'm in favor of fighting to victory. And um, by doing that, gaining the release of our of our hostages. I cannot, for the life of me, understand why anybody would attempt to seize defeat from the jaws of victory right now. Do I feel for our, our hostages? From a very personal standpoint, yes, I do. But, but unfortunately, we've allowed them to become weaponized, not just by Hamas, but by certain elements within Israel that see them as a very useful tool to bring down the current right-wing government. Well, but There's only but, one way to get them uh, home, and that's with the IDF. Uh, Mr. Mr. Pollard, and, but is, is that not... Uh, Mr. Paris, please. Is, is that not also a path forward that risks bringing them home but in body bags? I mean, do you not see, uh, given your own military expertise, uh, the, the danger if the hostages are indeed... Uh, hold up with elements of Hamas leadership in Rafah, and Israel goes in there into their last redoubt. Do you not fear for their life? Or indeed, are you prepared to you sacrifice their for? lives? I hear you. Do you know who I fear for? Eight million other hostage people that could be held hostage. Not unreasonable. In the I, I, I agree with that logic, perhaps. Are you saying you're prepared to sacrifice the hostages? Sometimes you have to make, as it was said to me, 
as it was said mm. to me, sometimes a country has to make sacrifices. And that was said directly to me, and I sat for basically 35 years. It's so, a, yeah. And, and I respect your own sacrifice, uh, Mr. Pollard. Call, I, but that's I certainly why we do. Elect people to make that call. But, there, but you should not, with respect, uh, disrespect those who look for a solution that would both remove Hamas and win back the hostages alive. To, we to, to portray war. that as some act of weakness or a quizzling is. attitude, uh, I, I is. think is well, quizzling, no. unfortunate. I think, I think the issue is that there are some things that are permissible in times of peace hmm. that are not permissible under any circumstances in times of war. And when you undertake actions that either dilute or delay or even undermine the primary objective of a country's war plan, which is in this case the destruct the the quick destruction of Hamas, then, well, I'm sorry, yeah. but you're you're aiding the well, enemy. Uh, in uh, uh, well, look, one of uh, democracy is tested uh, when it's difficult. Uh, a free speech is tested when the other speaker enrages you. Uh, Israel, despite this being is despite being in a this state of war. war for 76 years almost, Israel has never really given up on its democracy. And I fear when I hear voices from the extreme right, and I understand you're proposing to join them, and I urge you not to, because that's not the right path in history. They would be willing to, and Israel would go down a, 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 a path that we would come to regret, as other countries that have been seduced All by right. fascism have come to regret their past actions. I'm not talking about fascism. I'm talking about survival. Well, we can this, debate the merits of one. One, one always does when another, trying to seduce the public the enemy. with in, simplistic In this hell of our reality, the choices are between bad and worse, and not between uh, good and better. Two Jews, three opinions, but we did have one agreement. Uh, I think but more no, but than just I two think more than just three uh, three opinions, but two yes, agreements. I agree with you. Two, two agreements and counting exactly, gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us. We appreciate your time, uh, your insight. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Have a good, quiet night.